be b over 2a times x plus. Now, what's common here? Well, there's actually a b over, there's a b here, there's a 2a here, and I suppose this thing here is 2a times 2a, so there's actually a b over 2a common across these two terms, so let's take it out. So this is b over 2a times, well, it's times x, plus, well, what do we multiply this by to give us this? Well, we must multiply by a b to square it, and also by a 2a to give us a 4a squared, so we multiply this by b over 2a, which must be equal to this term, which is b squared, oh, over 4a squared minus c over a. We're nearly there now. Now, looking at these two terms here, okay, looking at these two terms, there's a commonality. It's the x plus the b over 2a is here, and the x plus the b over 2a is here. So let's take that out. So x plus b over 2a. And what's left behind, when I take that out here, what's left behind is an x, okay, because x times that will be this, plus what's left behind here is a b over 2a. So that's a b over 2a, which must be equal to this thing here, which is b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Okay, and we're nearly there now. Um, so just, just continuing on here, let me just fold this over, this page, so that we can actually read this, well, hopefully, whoops, a daisy, let's get this, let's just fold this over. Okay, so I'm just going to fold it in half if I can, really quickly, so that I'm not losing it here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, let's look at this. This here is the same as x plus b over 2a squared, must be equal to this term over here. There's a common factor here, common denominator, so let's get the common denominator here. Uh, what's the common denominator? It would be, it would be... 4a squared, okay, so it's 4a squared. So 4a squared into 4a squared goes once, once times the b squared gives us our b squared. a into 4a squared goes 4a times, so that's minus 4a times c gives us minus 4ac, okay? So now what we have is that the square of this term is equal to this here, so we could get the square root of both sides, so we end up with x plus b over 2a must be equal to plus or minus the square root of this thing here, which is b squared minus 4ac over 2a squared. Now, the root, the square root, recall, recall, the square root of a over b is the same as the square root of a divided by the square root of b. Okay, so we can get the root of, of the numerator and the root of the denominator here. Oops, that's a, that's a 4a squared here. So this becomes x plus b over 2a must be equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over the square root of 4a squared. Now the square root of 4a squared, well the square root of 4, don't forget the square root of a times b is the same as the root of a times the root of b, which is the root of 4, which is 2, and the root of a squared is a, so that gives us 2a. So you can see our formula now is starting to take shape, I think, okay? The formula is starting to take shape. I think we're nearly there now, okay? So let's see where we are. So now we have that, we have that, we have x plus b over 2a must be equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over. Well, this just becomes 2a, okay? Bringing our b over 2a across to the right, this becomes x is equal to minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which gives us x is equal to, well, the same common denominator here, so it's 2a, so we have a minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is our classic, which is our classic formula, okay, which is what we required uh, from the start. We required from the start to calculate or to derive this particular formula, which is the which is this formula here, which is exactly what we did. And we just did it through, I suppose, through a factorization technique. We just did it through completion of the square. So there was actually nothing crazy going on here. There was nothing unusual. Okay? The only thing that was probably a little bit complicated was that we hadn't actually got specific values for the coefficients. We let the coefficients be a, uh, b, and c. So we generalized to actually what those coefficients could be. Uh, but we still went on and we solved the problem using the completion of the square. Uh, okay, guys, the next video will actually calculate some roots of quadratics. Uh, so once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video, another video in our series dealing with quadratic equations and in particular algebra, uh, I hope that this video was intuitive. And more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.